Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is featuring some products from Hero Arts. Today I am going to be using the Stripe Stencil, these Love and Florals dies, the Be Mine bundle, and then I'm also going to be using the Loving Sentiments uh, strips. So I really, today we're creating four different cards and all of them use this Stripe Stencil. Um, there's a lot of stripe stencils on the market. This one's eight bucks, uh, but I just really wanted to show, I feel like they're such a good basic stencil to have, um, but I wanted to show kind of some extra things that you can do with them to get different patterns or different uses out of this one simple stencil, because you guys know I'm all about more bang for your buck. So first things first, I will be using my uh, Hero Arts blending brushes for all of this. All of the inks, um, or all of the cards have the same inks. It's Cotton Candy, Azalea, and Raspberry Jam. And I don't have my stencil taped down, and it's because I have repositional adhesive on the back of it. I had previously done that for another card. That's why it's not shown in this video. Um, but there is adhesive on, on the back to hold everything in place. <laughs> it's not magic. Um, I am not magical, though I wish I was. So basically, I like to start with my lightest color and then work down to my darkest. I'm doing a uh, gradient of color. I am going to eventually speed this up a bit because I'm doing the same thing over and over again. But I also like to go back in with the previous color and kind of blend them, um, just because I feel like doing it twice gives me a much better blend. And you don't, I did this for Valentine's Day, but you certainly don't have to. Any of these stripe backgrounds will work for any occasion you'd like to make them for or any color scheme you would like to use. So um, here, this is me just going back in, like I told you, I like to blend them twice. And then when I remove the stencil, you will see this is the stencil as it was intended to be used. So you have a nice uh, wide and then a thin line, but I am going to reapply my stencil, but instead of putting it in its original place, I'm actually going to cover up what we've previously inked and expose more of the white. Um, and this is going to give us a really cool striped uh, gradient look, um, but we're going to completely fill this background. So here, like I told you, I'm speeding it up because I'm doing the exact same thing over and over again. <laughs> um, but it's going to give us a totally different look. Even though it's going to be striped, it's not going to be the stripe that you would see if you only used the stencil once. Um, and so I, like I said, I just picked a three color blend and I thought that that worked pretty well, but you could certainly mix it up. You could do this rainbow. And then I will move it a third time to expose the last portion of the white. Um, and then you'll be able to see the the finished look, which is really unique and kind of fun. Uh, if, if you don't have this particular stripe stencil and you choose to use another stripe stencil, your design may look a little bit different, but, um, but that's okay. I think it's a totally fun kind of, you know, gradient look that you can use in a background. For this one, we're going to use, now obviously I've cleaned off my stencil in between, um, but I'm going to be turning it diagonally. And now I am masking off the top and the bottom. And for this background, we are going to be creating a diagonal effect. So it's like a a plaid diagonal, <laughs> if you will. It's, it's going to create this nice little focal point um, a nice area for us to rest our focal point on. And so the tape is not necessarily holding my stencil in place, but it is masking off the white portion of my cardstock. So once that's done, it's going one way and you certainly could use it that way, but I am going to flip mine the other way. Just when you do this, you want to make sure that your corners are kind of matching up so that your diagonal on like the top of your diagonal going left to right is the same on your diagonal going right to left. Um, so that way it creates this nice center focal point for you to, you know, put whatever you would like. I chose, um, like I said, to do a Valentine's Day theme, but you could certainly color up a really cute image or a floral. Um, any of those things would look super cute in the middle of this. 
So this is the second design. This one's probably my favorite, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> um, and then for the last one, I am going to do a diagonal again. I wish I had done this a little bit differently. When I did it, I didn't consult the stencil. I just went in and taped off an area. And the way that I taped it off does not match up with the lines of the stencil. And you'll see what I mean when we get, um, you know, kind of to the reveal of it. But this is combining your stencils with other stamps that you have. So um, it's just... Again, it's another way to kind of get more out of what you have. So I'm using the same colors, and this time I'm putting down a light blend um, just over my white cardstock. And then you do want to make sure that this portion is dry before you move on to the next step. Um, so once I have that blended and I'm happy with it, I of course went back over it you know how I am but once that is done then I am going to um, go in and I'm going to do some stamping I chose to leave my tape in place for this you could you know stamp the whole background and then the only portion you would be able to see would be you know where it was colored um, but I wanted the rest of it to be super clean so I'm using uh, one of my sweet petunia sticky mats because I am going to be stamping a full background I also removed my foam insert because this mini bold hearts stamp from hero arts is um, it, it is foam so you don't need the foam behind it I'm treating the area with my anti-static tool and again you want to make sure that this is dry uh, if you're kind of impatient and in a rush like me you can always heat set it um, you know with your heat gun and then I'm going to use just some clear embossing ink to stamp the hearts over the area that I have already inked. I was very careful to try to make sure that I didn't get ink um, in the areas that, you know, were white. Uh, not that I think it would be a huge deal. You could just knock off the embossing powder, but nonetheless. Um, so I went ahead and stamped that down, and now I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And then I used the Sparkle embossing powder from Hero Arts, which is a clear glitter embossing powder. So I just sprinkled that on, and you can see where on the tape where it's sticking to it. Um, in order to make sure that it didn't stick to my uh, cardstock when I went to peel my tape off, I just went in with a clean paintbrush and knocked off the extra that was um, on the tape just to make sure that I had a clean edge that I would be able to pull up. And you'll see that here in a second. So I actually made these cards quite some time ago and I kept telling myself like you know you need to go back in and and do that video but then other stuff would come up and um so I'm glad I'm finally <laughs> I'm finally getting able to share it uh especially you know since Valentine's Day is um coming up in the next two weeks so here I'm just heat setting that and um I know it might be kind of hard to see like you can see the shine it might be kind of hard to see the glitter but you can see the the glitter portion of it in real life and then these hearts will act as an emboss resist when I go in with the stencil over top of these so again, you want to make sure everything is cooled off and, and nothing is going to be pressed by your stencil. Now, here is where I discovered that the way that I taped it didn't match up with the stripes, but it just kind of was what it was. And so I had already kind of committed to the idea that I was going to have to trim this piece down, which is fine because I like doing, you know, different card layouts. Um, but so I knew that I was going to trim it down. That's why those two corners where the stencil um, isn't covering is not a big deal. Not for me. Uh, so here you can see the darker the color you use, the easier it is to kind of see that emboss resist. Um, so when I did the raspberry jam and then I wended back in and, you know, um, did the azalea again and then lastly the cotton candy, you certainly can see the hearts when I remove this, um, but you can definitely see them more where it is a little bit darker. So then I'll just go ahead and go in and remove my low tack tape and this is where it becomes extremely apparent that my stripes don't line up. Um, which, like I said, I didn't necessarily love, but I think in the end, the card came out fine. 
So, so here are, is the backgrounds that we're working with so far. And now we're going to start doing the accessories to kind of build them up. So I trimmed down that piece that I told you about. Um, and then I also trimmed this large background down just a quarter of an inch to give it a white border. And then the one with the plaid, I chose not to trim at all. That, that one by itself is just an A2 size card. So just a couple of different looks. Here, I just wanted to point out, I wanted my accessories, my hearts, my flowers, and everything to match, but I there is no cotton candy card stock from Hero Arts. They do have Peony, which is relatively close, but I just wanted to show you, if you don't have matching card stock, but you wanted to do something like this, you can always take your ink pad directly to some white paper and color your own paper. Now I did not do a large portion of this because I didn't need a large portion to die cut. Um, but that is how I got the pink and it's always darker. So for my accents, I used plum cardstock. I used the cotton candy that I made. And then I also used our white glitter cardstock and the azalea color, which I, is probably one of my favorite colors of cardstock I've ever owned. So I used the nesting hearts as well as the love um, floral, is it fl love and florals? I think it is love and florals dye. And I cut every flower and every heart out of every color because I like having options when I'm building these types of cards. Um, and so I figured it would just be better to die cut it and have it in my cup than want it and have to go back and do the die cutting. So here, I actually ended up with a fourth card because I realized that I could use the love letters out of, love letters, isn't that cute? Uh, I realized I could use the love letters out of this to create a fourth card, which was actually my most complicated, <laughs> was my most complicated card, but did that stop me? No, it did not. Um, so here, I've just laid that, I've glued the, the plum colored heart down, and then I've just laid the other, the card background over to use as a template. I put some foam adhesive on the back of each one of these letters and then I am just fitting these in um, to their cutouts. I had a little piece of foam tape that was sticking out where I didn't want it. And then um, I'm gonna, like I said, fit these in. You just wanna make sure that you line your, you don't have to perfectly line your stripes up, but line up the colors. So he, see here when I go to put it in at first, I need the dark to be on top. Um, and I had it in the wrong way because like those those uh, O pieces are the same. So then once that was done, I went ahead and figured out all of the, you know, like the whole layout for my flowers. Um, I'm just going to pop this off. And this is cute on its own, but I wanted to, you know, kind of dress it up a little. So I went in and arranged everything, and then I took a picture of it with my phone. The reason that I cannot, which you'll see me use later, the press and seal, like, uh, hinge method, the reason that I cannot do that with this, it's so much easier, is because I have to tuck some of these in behind the letters. So... If I had done them all as one piece originally without fitting the love in, like doing that part first, I probably could have used the press and seal, but I didn't. So I did speed this up a little bit because it did take me a while to build, and then we'll just go through and build the rest of the cards as well. So, life. What's been going on? Um, I'm glad that you guys enjoyed my story about um, my horrible night of parenting from the last video. <laughs> um so turns out it probably was some sort of stomach bug because Tuesday night, Nathan started getting sick. So Eric actually, like come to think of it, Friday night when he came home from work, um, he did not feel well at all. So there must just be something that something going around somewhere um, because he typically is pretty good, like... He doesn't get sick a lot. And he actually made the comment the other day. He was like, I have been sick more in the last two years than I have ever been like as an adult. And I was like, bro, because you got kids and because you got a kid in daycare. Like it just is what it is. It's it's a rough go when you're in it. But, you know, it is it's just our circumstances. 
So here, once um, well, I'm done building all of this, I'm basically just my little leaves on the side, putting in another piece of foam tape just to make them level. Uh, that's what you see me kind of uh, tucking in there so everything is secure. And then that card is done until we get to the sentiment. For this one, I kept it really simple. I did pop it up off of its background just to make it a little bit more interesting. So much foam tape, so much foam tape. Um, and then so I pop that up over a white card base and then I will set that aside again until we get to the sentiments. For the next card, I just did... I just did some hearts. I didn't even really do the florals. Um, and this is not like the the stenciled piece is not adhered, adhered to its card base. Why can't I talk? I don't know. So I'm just going through with my glue and my uh, tweezers and laying these down. Um, I did not go back in with like some pearls or um, like Hero has those the liquid pearls or you could do gems. Uh, here you can see me getting frustrated because I can't pick up my little hearts. You guys know I don't love dyes <laughs> because this is what happens to me. Um, I do acknowledge that they are very pretty um, and they do make good cards, but sometimes I get very frustrated with the process as you just witnessed here <laughs> in this video. So anyway, you could go through with like pearls and gems or um, some glitter and kind of like bolster up that little... Um, like spray feel that it has going on um but i didn't end up doing that and then once those are all adhered i did put more foam more foam tape all the foams um on the back of this piece as well and then i popped that up in the center of the card and then we will move on to the last one which is the plaid and like i said my favorite you'll have to let me know which one is your favorite i think they're all pretty decent ideas um even if you're not making valentines for just using as backgrounds um and then so for this one i did the flowers again with the heart but now this time because there nothing is popped up on foam um I can use that press and seal and just adhere them kind of layer by layer, which makes my life immensely easier. Like, it's so much less stressful to use dyes this way. So if you have not tried it yet, I highly recommend that you do. It will make you a happier person. Um, so because the heart is my first layer and almost everything is adhered to my heart, I felt like I could put the foam down. And like I said, if I had done the love this way, I could have used the press and seal, um, but I didn't. I didn't do it that way. I want It was more important to me that the love be even um, than it be easy for me to build my card. So now once that's down, then I'll fold it back over again and then just start adhering everything with the glue. So anyway, so he's he has been... Um, Look, we, there's just a lot of sickness at our house because we have kids. <laughs> um, so yeah, Peanut missed uh, two days of school and I'm not sure whether or not tomorrow he is going to be able to go. Um, but thankfully, as part of his basketball team, which our playoffs are this weekend, uh, they get free tickets to the Cavs game. And so Tuesday was the day of his Cavs game. And so his dad took him to that game. And fortunately, he was able to make it through the game. He didn't get sick until it was like the middle of the night that night. So at least he didn't get shortchanged out of that experience. So I am grateful for that. But then his teacher sent home a message um, today that, you know, they've gone over all these different of like long division uh, math things and they'll have a test on Monday and you know they've gone over the study guide together and all this stuff and I was like great he missed all of that perfect let's talk about what's going on here so here this is the loving sentiments it has a die this sentiment strips that also coordinates with um they have one for Christmas and I imagine that they'll come out with much more but so you can stamp either the heart uh, itself with all these cute little sentiments or you can stamp um, the hearts and then die cut them out or you could use a paper trimmer if you didn't have the die. Um, but so here, this is on plum cardstock. I am stamping uh, the loving sentiments as well as two other sentiments from the Your Mine bundle. One says Be Mine and one says Valentine. Stamping these in uh, unicorn white pigment ink and then I am going to heat emboss them in uh, white detail uh, embossing powder. 
these like because i do like a label scent type sentiment and maybe that's I, I don't even know that's trendy anymore i'm not positive but i like them um doing the, the white heat embossing on a black or a darker colored cardstock is really kind of my jam so I appreciate things like this because then I ended up using these sentiments for other cards um, because they were already cut in, in my little cup, my die cut cup on my desk. So once these are done, then I did cut my card stack apart. The one thing that I do want to mention with this die is instead of running it through vertically like you normally would, you want to run it through horizontally. And I know that sounds a little bit crazy, but if you run it through vertically, it can, the pressure of the plate can shift the die and almost like push it back so that it's not centered. So if you run it through this way, the pressure is going left to right instead of up and down. And I've never had them miscut that way. So then I die cut the Be Mine and the Valentine. You can see all of these um, little labels here. And then I just trim them down to the size that I need them. And then we're going to finish building the cards. So for this one here, um, this one, and I don't know if you guys have these things in your relationships or if your um, like parents had them, but one of the sentiments in here says, that's this is the one that I chose, um, it says you are my today and all of my tomorrows. Now, my mom and dad have always signed their cards, anniversary cards, save all your tomorrows for me. And that's just something that they have in their relationship. But that sentiment like immediately reminded me of that. And so that is why I chose to use it. I'm going to have to give it to my father so that he can give it to my mother for Valentine's Day. Um, so then for this one, I chose to go with the Be Mine. Even though it stamps as one sentiment, it die cuts as two separate. Um, so it gives you a little bit more leniency with where you can place it. So I just kind of tucked this in. And then for the Valentine one... I combined it with the sentiment strips. So it says Valentine and then Be Mine underneath it. And then for the last one, um, because I, re I really liked the background and I wanted the background to kind of be the star of the show, I kept it super simple and just put the sentiment right in between all of the, um, the die cut letters that say love. And this one says, I think it's always been you. And so I just put that in there and I glued it down flat and then that's it. So yeah, so pray for us that we get over this sickness and that I don't get it. Um, so far, so good. Uh, please, Jesus. Um, and then these are all of the cards that we created today with just this one $8 stencil. Like, and I love that. I love that there's a way that you can get so many different looks with something um, that you already have in your stash that is a little less expensive. So that's all four of them. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate your time. I hope you found something to inspire you and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.